So, uh, have you ever heard of the expression, when it rains, it pours? So, meaning, when there is one particular event or one particular outcome, it seems like that outcome happens all the time, right? It seems like, oh, well, there's, there, there is, I'm, I'm getting a really good streak of good luck, or I'm getting a really long streak of bad luck, for example, you just, you know, you just can't get a job, you can't get, um, you can't get a, a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, um, you know, lots of people seem to be um, injuring themselves around you or going to the hospital, all sorts of things like that. It seems rather peculiar for these particular phenomenons to happen all at once. And uh, there actually is some science or social science of why that actually might occur behind the scenes. It's actually kind of old stuff and it's stuff that we study as researchers, behavioral, uh, or, or I study organizations, which is sort of one reason, one, um, uh, one phenomenon that might explain what is going on. And the reason is, is that there is a lot of structure behind life. So, for example, it might seem like that there is um, all of a sudden lots of people having babies around you, right? So it might seem like, oh, wow, you know, I'm, I'm going through, going through life, and then all of a sudden everybody around me is having babies, well, the, the reason is, is because your age, you're growing up with a particular cohort, and your cohort is generally the friends that you have um, that are all roughly the same age, and you're going through life in a progress, and in, in a process where all of a sudden it just happens, you know, everybody's reaching the same age, that are all your friends, and it seems like everybody is, is, is having babies. The same thing with um, going through this stage in life, where for me, I went through a stage in life where it seemed like I was going to a, a zillion weddings, for example, that there was there was always a wedding. I don't know, there was maybe one year we were in, I, I want to say seven to 10 weddings. I can't exactly the number was, but it was a lot of weddings, right? And that's because you start going through process and you're going through life at the same time, this whole cohort that you have, and all of a sudden you're all going through the same stage and going through the same processes and you're all getting married all at once. Um, so this, there is a tremendous amount of structure in life around us. And in fact, that's exactly what an organization is. It's sort of an imaginary structure that we dream up. Organizations that are kind of really interesting because all it is, it's just a group of people that get together and they think that they should be doing something, whatever it is. And we all get together and we decide to do that particular thing in that organization. And kind of, it's, it's a really interesting thought when you think about it. So this is actually this sort of structure, what is called a, a um, more along the lines of, of a, 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 a fat tail distribution where outcomes actually follow a particular pattern where there is a lot of a, a little bit of something happening all at once or a lot of something happening all at once and then there's this very very extreme outliers that happen and that that is that sort of fat tail distribution of, of outcomes happens in everything around us so things like cities for example there's a lot of cities you might look around and you might think well, it seems strange that there's only a couple of really large cities around like new york tokyo right but then most of these are actually much, much smaller. So there's a group of cities that are really, really small and um, a lot that are, or a very tiny amount that are very large. Same with her earthquakes or hurricanes or any particular natural disaster. There is a lot of them that happen um, that, that have a certain amount of low severity or they, they group together that they're all kind of the same sort of severeness and they happen all the time. There's earthquakes happening all the time that most people don't even know about and they don't feel. Um, uh, uh, hurricanes, it's, it's definitely a lot more rare because it doesn't happen all the time, but there is a lot of hurricanes that happen that are kind of really small, but then you get the odd, really disastrous, huge one. Um, things like wealth, 
uh, wealth outcomes, for example. So you might see people around you, they all have the same distribution of, of wealth. A lot of people have the same distribution of wealth or, or income, whatever you're looking at, that uh, most people uh, make, I don't know what the, the, the average uh, median income is. I think it's, oh, I'm, I'm gonna probably be totally wrong because it changes every year. Um, but let's say it's seventy thousand dollars a year for a, a family of two in America or Canada, um, in the UK, or wherever you're from. That it's seventy thousand. Most people will have that, or are grouped around that particular. Most families will have seventy thousand dollars that they're making every single year. Um, but then there'll be the odd one that's going to make a lot of money. So that'll be the one percent. Um, the 1% is kind of a, a natural phenomenon that happens, not necessarily anything that, um, that, that, that we should be upset about or anything like that. It's just kind of what happens. It's called if there's a long tail distribution. We think that the distribution of these particular outcomes are, are what is called sort of a normal distribution that everybody's kind of clustered together, but that's not the case. Actually, there's very long tail distributions in pretty much everything. Performance outcomes, for example, there's a lot of firms or a lot of companies, um, a lot of individuals that are grouped around one particular sort of performance level. You look, go to the gym and you can look around and, or the fitness club or whatever you call it, you can look around and most people are really clustered around the same ability. They can only lift a certain amount, but then there's the odd, really weird, crazy person. Um, or the, the odd sort of strange what we think is outliers that they're huge or they're really fast or they're very muscular or fit and they, you know, they, they have a great body. Um, that, is partic that, that is really normal to have that particular phenomenon. Most people sort of cluster around thing and around a, a group of outcomes and then there's one or two that are sort of off in their own space. I'm trying to point over here, but most of you can't see that. <laughs> so they're really off in their own space and and and, and own um, uh, area. That then it seems kind of unattainable, right? Well, why is that the particular? Why is that the case? Well, there's actually a lot of structure, um, sort of from social interactions that underlie all these different outcomes. I, so, for example with uh, wealth outcomes, or let's, let's start with performance outcomes. So in terms of the social interactions, it might be the case that they were raised, those particular individuals that, that are so athletic. It might be that they were raised by some very athletic parents, for example, and they trained all the time, or it could be the complete opposite, that their parents were not athletic at all and they didn't do anything, so then they're kind of thinking to themselves, I'm not going to try to be like that particular parent, and so they're trying to go to the extreme. It might be that their friends, they have a small group or a small cluster of friends that maybe they're meeting online, for example, or maybe that they meet a, at another local fitness club or their the runners, for example, a small group of runners, that they all get together and they push each other. And so you have these underlying emergent social interactions that are driving that particular pattern where you get these very extreme outliers and then most people are sort of clustered around the, the middle. The other thing that happens that we often forget about, and it's extremely important and explains things like wealth outcomes, for example, or um, the, the amount of income that you have, for example, it's path dependencies and what is called a sort of auto-correlation relationships for those of you who are kind of more statistically minded. Um, these path dependencies are a phenomenon where a outcome, you get a particular outcome, right? You try to do something and you get that outcome. That outcome will feed back, you get a positive feedback loop into the next stage of what you're doing. So you get the path dependent. So you do something and then you kind of gain some sort of extra performance boost from that. And then you constantly have been going farther and farther and you're growing up and up and up in terms of performance. And it happens in the opposite direction too. You can actually get path dependency in the opposite direction where you get worse and worse and worse. You get sort of feedback loops over time. So for example, people doing 
deviant behavior, those nasty behaviors where somebody learns to, uh, you know, some of you might look around and say, well, how does somebody become homeless? It seems like a strange thing, right? So this is where um, people have learned stuff over time that they, they had one particular negative outcome and they sort of settle down on that particular outcome and they, they learn that a negative or they learn that negative behavior and it gets worse and worse and worse. So they, um, so for example, they might actually join some, they, they might gain a friend that um, is into drug use, for example. So that drug use, uh, they might get exposed to that and might get normalized to that drug use. They might not actually try that particular drug, but then they get normalized to it and then they actually want to try that drug. And then they start trying it and then they try another drug and all that kind of stuff, right? And you kind of get this sort of positive, feed, positive feedback loops, but it going in sort of a negative direction. So what you get is these sort of path dependencies in life with income. Uh, so for example, you earn a little bit of money and those people that have earned a little bit of money, some of them are going to, some of them are going to spend it, right? Some of them are going to save and invest it. Those that are going to save and invest it, even if it's a small amount, and I recommend 10, 15 percent. Um, so I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan because he's very practical. And he has all these rules and he recommends 15 percent, which is a OK. It's perfect. So you want to take that 15 percent and you invest it and then it sits there and sits there and then it'll grow and grow and grow and grow. You get these positive feedback loops, right? And each moment or each period will grow bigger, bigger, bigger until pretty soon you have a large amount of wealth available. And the same with income that you invest in your skills and capabilities and people start giving you more and more of those um, sort of, they, they start seeing that you have more and more skills and abilities and they start paying for more of these skills and abilities and it grows and grows and grows until eventually you are having a huge income and a large amount of wealth that everybody else thinks is, well, that's crazy. But it's not necessarily crazy if you look at the path of their life um, in the long run. And that's what's called path dependency, right? That it takes a long time to get to that particular phenomenon. Now, there are unusual things that happen along the way that there are sort of lucky circumstances and somebody might get a very positive boost or they might have a catastrophic event, say they don't have insurance on their house and they their house burns down. Well, that those particular negative, um, those, those, those exogenous shocks that happen, they will force somebody um, into a lower state or a higher state um, very, very quickly in the same sort of way. But in general, there's these sort of um, these path dependency effects in, in life and you can continuously uh, develop over time. So there's two particular things. There's underlying emergent social interactions as well as these path dependencies that happen in life that we all forget about. We make these judgments. We're very, very what's called, uh, we're um, intuitive statisticians is what People like to suggest we are as, as human beings or where um, we, we, we sort of make Bayesian estimates. Sometimes people will say that too. It basically just means we look around and we look at our um, under uh, uh, what's around us and we make these very intuitive leaps of what we think the world is around us based on these observations. But then we don't see these underlying emergent interact, social interactions and these past dependencies. And we often make these very inappropriate, um, we, we make these inappropriate estimations or um, predictions of what the world should be around us. So for example, everybody should be, you know, have the a, a sort of equal distribution of wealth uh, versus having ones that have very extraordinary amounts of wealth and then everybody else is clustered together. Um, in those wealth distributions. So if you are wondering, so coming back to that question of why does it seem like bad things happen all at once or good things happen all at once? Well, there's a lot of structure in life. There's all these things that happen not only in social life or, uh, you know, organizational life, but also in the natural world that there's a lot of structure in these interactions that things, there's all these kind of things that are working all together and independently, but independently, but then they kind of 
impact each other, and they kind of uh, create sort of these unfolding events that, um, that, that, that create a tremendous amount of structure in, or they create these sort of moments where it seems like everything bad happens all, all at once because there are sort of these, um, uh, th there's these feedback <laughs> relationships that cause things to sort of tip um, and there's sort of um, a, a, a large cluster of things that happen. Uh, goodness. So coming back to the question, why do you think bad, or why does it seem like bad things happen all at once or good things happen all at once is because you get these um, emergent social interactions and path dependencies that kind of interact together and then all of a sudden, there, it seems like there is a cluster of events that happen, but it's actually just kind of a long buildup over time of these sort of tiny micro events that are happening over time, or micro outcomes over time, and they just kind of click all at once. So it seems kind of like a strange thing that happens, but it's sort of a normal random processes that happen in life. This is more of sort of the random randomness that we should observe in life compared to what we think is just kind of random noise.